Cool. Very good. Well, welcome to our tasting this afternoon. And it's my pleasure to introduce you to Francesco. And Francesco um, looks after the family wines of the Chadwick family uh, and looks after them for the UK and for Asia. Um, so we fall into Asia, of course. Uh, but Asia Pacific and um, have Francesco looking after this part of the world. So very um, pleased to have you online with us this afternoon, Francesco, and really looking forward to going through and tasting these wines. So I think what we'll do, we'll just unmute you there and let you take it away. Hello, everybody. Um, pleasure to see you all. Thank you for, for joining. Um, I would have loved to be there personally <laughs> in New Zealand. I've uh, always uh, wanted to go there. I, I've been in a stopover by plane, but I never stay there. So next time, hopefully we will get the tasting uh, in person there. And hope all of you are safe and well, because we, we, we read in the news about the, an earthquake, a quite big one. So hope everyone and every family is doing well. Well, now today we will talk a little bit about uh, Chile, about the uh, Viña Rasuris specifically, and where are we, and we will taste some very nice wines from our portfolio. So I will start moving forward and I will show you a presentation. Just a second. Can you see? Yes, we can. <laughs> okay, great. So just uh, for you to know, last year, which was a very difficult year for everybody, but it was our anniversary, <laughs> 150 years anniversary. And we were planning many, many events, but of course we didn't do anything, but we, will po we, we have postponed them, hopefully for this year to do some events celebrating our 150 years of history. So the one that was the founder, it's called uh, Don Maximiano Errazuriz. And uh, he founded the Viña Errazuriz in 1870 in the Aconcagua Valley. He was a very wealthy man from a very wealthy family. So he used to travel a lot to Europe and, 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 and many different countries by, of course, by boat at that time by ship and then he he, he he pretty understood about wine and so he brought some some cats from france and then he went by horse from santiago the capital to the aconcagua valley which is 60 kilometers north of santiago then i will show you a, a map so he went horse riding and he settled there in aconcagua valley because he thought that was <clears throat> the best land for planting and bringing the best wine from Chile. For, you, for your information, at that time, there were only two or three wineries um, already going. You know, there were, there, were, there were vines, but there were vines that came from the Spanish conquerors that brought vines to Chile. And, and therefore, there were, there were a lot of vines in the south of Chile, Pais and other varieties. But the first uh, Bordeaux varieties that were brought were brought around the, the eight, eight, 19th and 18th century. So I have a, a really small video to show you a little bit about the latest landmarks of uh, the winery. Hopefully you will be able to watch it and listen it because sometimes it's not so easy, but hopefully we will.
Well, did it's, you hear we, it? Okay. We did. Great. We saw it and we heard it. Very good. Great. So, so, so that's those are a couple of landmarks that describe our winery, and we feel very proud of having received a couple of those awards. Eduardo Chadwick, the is the fifth generation now, and is now the owner who's leading the winery, and he was chosen the Canterman of the Year, which is a very highly recognized award for for the wine businessman. Um, we had been chosen uh, best Chilean winery by Robert Parker in 2017, which is uh, an excellent award as well. It's the only Chilean winery that have received that. And uh, I don't know if you have, you have heard or not, but the, the, there's a there's like the Paris tasting. Uh, Eduardo Chadwick wanted to to showcase uh, all the critics on the world that we were able to produce really high quality wines. So he made these blind tastings uh, first in Berlin and then all over the world. So we got the really good um, recognition for our wines. I will show you a very quick video as well about that so you can have an idea of what we have done in the latest years. So what I told you, Don Maximiano was the founder in Aconcagua Valley. Uh, all the Rasuris family has been quite relevant in Chile playing a really crucial role in the Chilean political and social history. So they have had the four presidents, two archbishops. So it's a really important family in Chile. And the, so Eduardo joined the company in 1983. He's nowadays the, he's leading the winery and of course the, the owner, the fifth generation. In 2010, we we inaugurate the Don Maximiano Icon Winery, which is a really really nice uh, place to do our Icon wines. It's a uh, gravity flow and latest technology and a lot of uh, sustainable sustainable practices within that um, winery. And then the Berlin tasting that I will show you a really quick video so you can get an idea of what, what it was. On a cold January morning in 2004, 36 of Europe's most highly regarded wine critics, journalists and buyers met in Berlin to blind taste 16 wines. Eduardo Chadwick, owner and president of the Chilean winery Viña Erasuris, organized the Berlin tasting and seminar with a simple yet powerful objective. The Berlin tasting came upon my frustration that critics were not really recognizing the quality of our wines because they knew they were Chilean until it was a new country coming into the world stage. So the idea was to have a blind format where they could concentrate on their senses and really evaluate our quality for what it was. Stephen Spurrier, one of the world's foremost wine critics, hosted the tasting. The wines were selected from Bordeaux and Tuscany's legendary millennial vintage, most of which had been awarded an immaculate score of 100 points by wine critic Robert Parker. The wines were carefully served without revealing the labels. The results were compiled and calculated. And then the unexpected happened. I was surprised, to say the least, when Eduardo knew that he'd got a wine in the top five, he relaxed visibly. He turned to me and said, that's nice. And then the next two were French, and then the top two were, were his. He didn't expect a result like that. Nor did I, nor did anyone else. From Berlin, this unique experience was recreated in the wine capitals of the world, setting out to test the ultimate standards of quality for an icon wine, consistency, and aging potential. Yet, around the world, the Chilean wines consistently earned acclaim, opening minds to Chile as an origin for truly world-class wines, one glass at a time. Were you able to, to see call? it and, and listening it, right? Yes, we could. We could see it and listen. Great. Perfect. <laughs> so, so did tell you a bit about the story of the Berlin tasting, and as you saw, and I probably didn't explain, but um, 
Errasturis Family Wines, o, oh, sorry, Viñedos Familia Chadwick. Um, just to explain you something really quickly. Um, uh, the third generation, there were only, only women. Okay? So one of those got married with a Chadwick. And then they lost, you know, the Errasturis uh, family name because we use in Chile the father's name and then the mother's name uh, second. Sorry. So that's why today the owners are the Chadwick family, okay? And the Viñedos Familia Chadwick group, they have two wines that are going through La Place de Bordeaux with the negociants. It's Viñedo Chadwick and Seña. Those, they have a, a negociant distribution, same as the, 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 the greatest wines of the world. And then we have a Viña Rasuris, Arboleda, and Caliterra, which are the three uh, other wineries uh, that, are, belongs to the group. I, I'm not going to talk now about Seña and Viñedo Chadwick, nor Calidera or Arbolea, because we're here for Errasuris, but I just wanted to let you know the, 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 the wineries that belongs to the same family. Okay, so we are in the same hemisphere in Chile, like New Zealand. Um, probably New Zealand, it's a little bit, well, a little bit in the lower part of Chile. Um, I mean, in this, in this, I don't know in which latitude, which, which latitude do you have, Liz? Do you know which latitudes do you have? Uh, I don't know in Auckland. Uh, here we are in the 32 degree latitude. Do you know which latitude are you in Auckland? Yeah, Auckland, we're at 36. 36, so a little bit down, a little bit down. Yeah. It's, should be like a Colchagua. Well, anyway, this is Chile, a really long and thin country, 4,500 kilometers long from north to south. And we have something that we call, and we, we feel very proud because we, we think we have kind of a viticultural paradise because we do have four natural barriers that surrounds our country that make us be really protected from any disease or anything. So we have in the north, we have the Atacama Desert, which is the driest desert in the world. In all the east coast, we have the Andes Mountain, which goes all the way from the south up to Venezuela. In Venezuela, the up, it, it ends the Andes Mountain. Then in the southern part, we have the Patagonia, which is a really cold place, a beautiful, really similar to, to New Zealand very natural and beautiful. And then on the, on the west side, we have the Pacific Ocean. And the Pacific Ocean has something really interesting, which is the Humboldt Current. We have a, the ocean is quite cold because we have this Humboldt Current coming up from the Southern Pole. So that's why our ocean is really cold. And that is key for the wine make. Well, you know very well because <laughs> you have really, I mean, your ocean is quite cold as well. So that helps a lot for the, for the terroir. I mean, if we would have, have a, a, a warmer ocean, but probably we will, wouldn't be able to, to plant very close to the ocean, you know, it wouldn't be a good terroir. But, so those are four key points for us that make us have a very special, uh, <clears throat> what we think uh, terroir in Chile to, to, to grow vines. So if we go in the middle part of Chile, uh, we have Santiago, okay? We have the Andes Mountain in the right side of the map. Then in the left side, we have the Pacific Ocean. And then here you have the Maipo Valley, really, really well-known valley. Then up the valley and the north, you get the Aconcagua Valley, which we will zoom up just next and then you have a Casablanca, Casablanca Valley which is another let's say cool climate valley that is quite well known in Chile uh, then we have 500 kilometers north we start with the wine valleys and probably seven to eight hundred kilometers south we keep on with the valley so in Chile we have around 1200 kilometers of land where we can find some different valleys. 
we are very lucky because we have, you know, the Andes Mountain, which has a lot of snow, and then the Pacific Ocean, and then in between those latitudes, those 1,200 kilometers, you can find very nice places to grow different kind of uh, varieties. Okay. Um, this is the Mount Aconcagua, which is, of course, gives birth to the valley and to the river. This is the highest mountain in the whole southern hemisphere and from the whole Andes mountain. This mountain has uh, 6,960 meters above the sea level. So it's a really, really beautiful, beautiful mountain. And it gives birth to the, to the valley, which is, uh, in, in my opinion, quite beautiful as well. And you have a nice river. So, so yeah, so now we are in Aconcagua. Um, here is the valley, you know, here you have in the right side, you have the Andes mountain range. And then on the left, you have a Pacific Ocean. And then all the green part is the valley. So the closer to the Andes, the warmer and the more oscillation between day and night. Okay, so in the daytime, in all the max one, two, three, four, five, and where the, the, the old cellar is, in the daytime, uh, around summer, you could have around 30 to 32, 33 Celsius degrees, very warm, but very, very dry, no humid no humidity, okay? And in the nighttime, thanks to the Andes mountain, I will show you, let me just one second. Here you can see a little bit how Chile is from north to south. So we have the Andes at the right, and then on the left, the, the ocean. So so the, the thing on the inland, the inland vineyards that we have, we do have a lot of oscillation, which is quite nice for the reds usually. All the reds, we can find it, the red varieties, we can find it here close to the Andes mountain or in the, in the, in the central mid part of the valley. But then in the, in, the, in, the, in the west side, close to the Pacific Ocean, since we have a really cold ocean, then um, the cool breezes from the ocean cools down the place. So we do not have too much oscillation. And therefore, we do not have too much degree days to ripe Cabernet Sauvignon or Carmenere or Merlot. It's not enough to ripe. So then we are specialized there with the, like, like you guys, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Pinot, um, mostly, and then some Syrah as well. So in Aconcagua Valley, Mediterranean weather, so really long and dry season. So you can find no rains between spring and summertime, no a single rain. So we irrigate, we need to irrigate. This is not the dry farming, we need to irrigate. And we have the Andes mountain, which is our source of water, you know? So I think it's a really good terroir. We, we drop drip irrigation, we apply to more, more in the inland zone. And then of course in the, in the, in the west side, in the close to the ocean as well. So just to remind you a little bit, so we have like the middle or Piedemont where we got more oscillation, more temperatures. So more the reds, Cabernet, Carmener, Merlot, Petit Verdot, Cabernet Franc. And then really close to the ocean. In this case, Aconcagua Gosa is just 10 kilometers away from the ocean in straight line. We do have our whites. Any questions so far? Please feel free to ask anything you want. Uh, let this be a conversation. I don't want to talk all the time. <laughs> if, you, if you don't understand anything or you want to ask, please feel free to ask, okay? And uh, before going to the tasting, I would like to explain you quite quickly about the soils. I don't want to go into deep uh, details, but we have some different alluvial and colluvial soils, mostly in the inland part. So close to the river, of course, we have alluvial soils, which has been 
for many, many years coming from the glaciers of the Andes Mountain and then bringing back from the, from the, from the river Aconcagua. So it's quite rich in, 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 with deep soils, nice depths, a little bit of long textures. Not this one. This one is not so close to the river, but this is the, the, the old cellar and where the Max 1 vineyard is. Remember, we do have, sorry, I will come back just one second. We do have eight, nine vineyards around the Aconcagua Valley. Okay. Don Maximiano arrived in Max 1. Then we had been, the family had been buying and planting. And then in 2005, just in 2005, Eduardo Chavik ventured into the coast and he bought that property. So we had been doing this, of course we had been doing whites from Casablanca before, because we do have a, a, a property in Casablanca, but the Aconcagua Costa has been now our key terroir for the whites and the Pinot and Syrah from the coast. So we have this kind of soils in the inland, then we have <clears throat> other type of soils where we, where we can find the Carmené, Cabernet, and Petit Verdot, a little bit more sandy, clay loam. And then we have, uh, I think this one is Max 5. I, Max 5 is one of our best terroirs in the, in the, in the Aconcagua Valley. I mean, the terroir, the, 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 the drainage, the, 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 the composition, and the close, the close to the river has made it quite outstanding when, we had already been 150 years in the in the in the valley, so the winemakers already know where the best group, uh, fruit is coming from. So, so Max Five is one of our best uh, is one of our best vineyards, and it's, it's where we source most most of our of our top Cabernet Sauvignon for Don Maximiano, for instance. Okay, and then other type of soils with different inclinations. And then when we talk about the coast, um, we have, a, as I told you, Aconcagua Costa is a DO, very close to the ocean, very more temperate weather, not so high oscillations, not so high temperatures. We can reach 25, 23, and then in the nighttime, 10, 12. Remember that inland was 30, 35 in summertime, and then in the nighttime, it could have reach 10 degrees, you know, so we have a 20 degrees oscillation, which makes uh, perfect for the slow ripening of the red Bordeaux varieties. So now we are in the coast. We brought uh, Francois Manier Petit, which is, uh, she has, she's one of the most expert uh, soil people in the world. She had mapped all Burgundy and she had been hired as a uh, consultant for many top Burgundy vineyards. So we brought her here and we made more than 200 pits, uh, soil pits, and we study the whole property. And then we realized that we have some specific places that we had a really nice metamorphic rust, schist or slate uh, type of soil. So. So that's why we started to 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 uh, to make our Pizarras range, which probably uh, Glengarry haven't brought any, but uh, soon probably they will. <laughs> so anyway, today Pizarras is our top wine from the coast. It has been chosen the best wines from Chile ever by Robert Parker. First time he gave 98 points to a wine from Chile. We have now many wines for, for 98 points, like uh, Seña and Vigneo Chadwick. But the first one was Pizarra Chardonnay, 2017. And then we have a top uh, Pinot Noir as well from there. And, and of course, we will taste today the Aconcagua Costa range, the specialty range Pinot Noir, which is one of my favorite uh, wines from the company in terms of price and quality. It's, it's amazing. So the soil, I, I must say that we were very lucky because when when Eduardo bought this property, he was not thinking in doing 200 pit soils. And we were the first ones that went to that property. I mean, we are the only ones that are around there. So you have Casablanca, most of the people from Chile, of the 
of the family wines, the, the, of the wineries. They, they are bringing the, the, the cool Clement wine from Leida, which is a little bit southern, uh, or from Casablanca. But from Aconcagua Gosa, we're mostly the only ones, and the vision of the owner, Eduardo, was to try to cover the full valley, you know, as his first generation, Don Maximiano, did with the founding the winery. So, so we have been very lucky because we found a beautiful property with beautiful soil profile, beautiful soil profile, which gives a very good profile to the wines. And then they have been chosen one of the best, the best white wines from Chile. We, we, this wine, for example, <laughs> goes very quickly in the UK where they are really fun to Burgundy and, and, and this they find a really, really good deal for them uh, because Burgundy is every year more expensive, <laughs> very, very expensive. So, so we're very proud of this uh, new range. This is a picture of the Aconcagua Costa range, uh, sorry, Vineyard. It's quite hilly with different sun exposures, with different soil profiles. So it, it gives a lot of versatility to the vineyard to get different, different, uh, let's say, profiles of different lots. For example, we will taste today Aconcagua Costa Pinot Noir. It's not taken from a single lot from the property. It's taken for a, a different lots within the same property. So it's, it's a single vineyard. So it's taken from the same property, but with different profiles, with different sun exposures and, and all of that. Um, and uh, well, our chief winemaker, Francisco Vedic, he's, I would say, he's today one of the best, if not the best winemaker of, from Chile. Um, he had been working in Errazuriz for the last 17 years. So I think uh, we have been very lucky to have him and he has done a very great career. Um, I must say with uh, some changes on the way, you know, we in Chile, we were very, uh, let's say US market focus, you know, the US market were buying a lot of Chilean wine. So at that time, the, U the Americans looked after very much Robert Parker, let's say style, with a lot of alcohol, a very bold wine. So, so if you taste back wines from, for example, Don Maximiano back to, back to 2004, 2005, you will find a lot of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon in the base with a very overripe uh, style, with, it's very elegant anyway, with uh, very alive, but 14 degrees Celsius, 14.5, a little bit more bold wine, you know? So, so nowadays he has been changing the style more into the, a little bit more the old world style, uh, more fresh, more elegant. So you, we will taste a beautiful, for, for him, after the 2018 is the best vintage ever for Don Maximiano. So we, we will taste, I think one of the best vintages, the most, was the really cool vintage, cooler than average vintage really refined, really elegant, and, uh, and very nice vintage. And uh, well, 2018 vintage is one of the, as, as all the critics have said, and of course we can, we have already um, tasted, it's one of the best ever vintage from Chile, 18. And 16 for us was good because for Erasuris, we were, already like 10 years moving to the to the path of a, of a more quality and refined and elegant wines rather than doing overripe and more bold wines so 2016 which was a cooler vintage for us was amazing but for not for the vineyards for all the wineries that that was a great vintage you know anyway this is in a, a quick a quick view of our of our portfolio we have the state range as an entry wine really fruit driven wine with a little bit of a, of a touch of, uh, of oak then we have the max range which is a very strong range for us uh, very nice wines reflecting very much the terroir of the Aconcagua then we have the specialties where we wanted to build a little bit this specific plots from the costa and the inland. 
we have the Aconcagua Alto, Alto means high, and we have the Aconcagua Costa Range. Costa means coast. And we will taste one of the Costa Range. And then we have the icons where we have uh, Don Maximiano, La Cumbre, Cai, and Las Pizarras. So, um, very quickly, because we will have it in a tasting, but Don Maximiano, it's in honor to the founders, to the founder, Don Maximiano. It's mostly today a Cabernet Sauvignon based wine. It's a Bordeaux blend based with Cabernet Sauvignon. Cai in Mapudungun language, which is a native language from Chile, means leave. And this is a, this is our our best Carmener from our best single plots from the property. And the nice thing of the of the Carmener is that the vine gets the, 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 the leaf red in the autumn. So that's why we put the leaf like that. And that's why this French guy that came in 1994, 1993 to Chile, he discovered the Carmener that was mixed it with the, with the Merlot. So we thought it was Merlot, but it was Carmener. I don't know if you know the history, uh, if you want me to tell it quite quickly or not, but anyway, well, Carmener, Phylloxera, Phylloxera finished with the Carmener in the old world, in France, in Italy, and the Phylloxera finished with that. But before that, there were some people coming to Chile that brought some cuts, some cuttings, and then they planted. But in Chile, we didn't know until 1993 that we have Carmener in the country. So that's why we don't have enough, too many years of experience with the Carmener, which is a quite tough, difficult, difficult variety to, to ripe and to understand. But anyway, we have a top wine of Carmener, which we hope you like it. <laughs> For me, it's a beautiful wine. And then we have La Cumbre, which is um, in honor to the Syrah, Eduardo Chadwick, with many, many different things that he have done for Chile winemaking. He was the one that brought uh, Syrah from uh, the Rhone Valley. He was the first one in bringing it. And he was the first one in planting in a hillside in Chile. Before in Chile, all the, all the vineyards were planted in a, in, a, in a flat side, or most of them. So that's why we, Cumbre means summit. So that's why we have like a tribute to the Sira and the summit called Cumbre uh, for, for, uh, for our wine, La Cumbre. Uh, this is a more inland, more warmer Sira rather than a cool climate Sira. And then we have, of course, Las Pizarras in Aconcagua which you don't uh, currently have, but hopefully we will get some bottles there. Um, in the coming in the coming time really worth to 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 benchmark with new zealand which has beautiful cool climate wines as well and they, well this is uh, luis gutierrez saying that pizarra's chardonnay really blew his mind and he really thought it was coming from uh, burgundy terroir and then the specialties as we already explained really well recognized as well uh, with a lot of consistency and the same as Mac it shows uh, the expression of uh, Aconcagua Valley really consistent with the I mean some people like to check the accolades some people don't but we usually try to communicate to mostly to, 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 to communicate the consistency of the quality and then the state, as I told you, it more reflects a varietal character with a little bit of a, a little bit touch of oak. But it's mostly we, we mostly try to bring the variety and the terroir into the into the glass. So that's it. We can go now to the tasting list. Sorry if I take too long. <laughs> no, no, that's perfect. There's lots of good information. I think just to to explain Chile and also the progression because um, you know there's been very rapid progression to where the wines are now so excellent thank you thank you do you have any questions before we go into the tasting someone no okay oh i think everyone's good 
Can you can you lead me the the wines in the tasting? I don't remember the flight uh, list. It's please. okay. So the first one um, that we have is the Max Reserva Chardonnay. Okay. So um, Max Reserva Chardonnay 2018, and beside that we have the Aconcagua Costa Pinot Noir 17. That's great. That's great. So. So let's start with this um, this uh, Max Chardonnay. So remember that what I told you, the white wines are coming really close to the ocean. So in this case, we mostly source this wine from the Concagua Costa property and a little bit from Casablanca. So that's why you can see that the DO is a Concagua Valley, right? So. Um, Otherwise, it would have been Aconcagua Costa. So we source these grapes from, as I told you, from for, from both uh, properties. The, the 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 conditions that I told you and being a little bit a little bit more specific is that we have a lot of foggy mornings in those areas in the in the coast side. We have some foggy. Um, just a second. So there's a lot of foggy mornings and in the afternoon it, it, it appears a little bit more the sun. So that's why we don't have too high temperatures because the Pacific Ocean breezes help us to cool down the place. Uh, this wine, the style of that Francisco Betic looks after this wine is more a balanced Chardonnay, not too much in the oak side, not too much in the citric side, but a little bit more balanced. So that's why we use uh, mostly French used oak, 10 months, and a little bit of 20% new. We do malolactic, but roughly at 35%. So you can feel a little bit of, uh, you can feel well in the nose, in the nose, uh, I feel a little bit of tropical fruits, but really, really, really nice then 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 in the, in the, in the palate you can feel you can feel a little bit of uh, a little bit of vanilla a little bit of creaminess but quite balanced a little bit of let's say a little bit of citric notes but not too much it's quite balanced and uh, yeah it has a has a really nice finish and, uh, has a 13% alcohol and uh, yeah that's it if you want to ask anything uh, about this wine what do you think about this chardonnay yeah it's really good i really like the texture of it um particularly um just a, a couple of questions there's one that's just popped up is asking what clones are used um, do you know what, the clones what, for this? Ah, yeah, no, it's a good question. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't know it. Uh, okay. It's a really good question, and I should I should have it written because I I have studied a little bit, but I don't remember quite well uh, for this okay. Chardonnay. Honestly. Stephen, I'll um I'll come back to you with that. I think I have it, it, it written somewhere. So yeah. yeah, but I think it's what's really interesting is you know it's not. I think this Chardonnay is not what you would expect from Chilean Chardonnay. Yeah, no, I think. I yeah. Think it, I think. I think quite similar to you. I I taste. I I love the Chardonnay, so I I try to taste as much as possible, and I I really like the the balance of this one, um, of the style of Francisco Vedding in general. This is, in general, I think it's mostly the style of the of the winery and. And the, of the winemaker, I'm not saying that the Oki Chardonnays are not so good as this one. It's matter of uh, it's matter of opinions, but I think uh, in this you can you can feel a little bit more the the, the terroir and the freshness of the of the wine. So so yeah, mm. I think the acidity is really good in it. You know, you've got it, nice. it's got lovely richness, but then the acidity. Um, you know, means um, that balance. It, it, yeah, it balances it, but also it carries it out to a really nice finish to it. Yeah. 
Cool. Anyone? So does everyone like it or not like it? Or mm. yeah, there's lots of people nodding, <laughs> which is good. A surprise to what you thought it would be? Yeah, the balance. Yeah, it's good. Cool. Great. Very good. Great. Which one we go now, Liz? The Pinot Noir, right? Uh, the Aconcagua Costa Pinot Noir 17. It's a 17? Yes, 17. Yes. Sorry, just okay. back to the Chardonnay. Um, we have got what the clones are for you. Um, and it looks like um, it's 548, which is um, important for concentration. Clone 95, which will help with the aromatics. And um, Clone 76, which is a good clone for cooler climate. Great. Uh, sorry, but I, I didn't hear you the first time. You, you, you told me the clones that we have or the uh, normal clones or? No, those are the ones I think that you have in that Chardonnay. I think so. Yeah. Well, you're very good, Lisa. <laughs> I should know that. I, I mean, usually, well, I, I do many tastings all over the world. Uh, I always say that I need to remember the clones or understand a little bit more. And uh, sorry that <laughs> Perfect. I. Perfect. That's why you have us. The pandemic <laughs> situation has, has made me forget many things. But uh, yeah, well, this is one of my favorite wines from the company in terms of uh, price, price quality, uh, quality wise. This is from the Aconcagua Costa uh, vineyard that I show you very close, a lot of cool influence. 2017 was particularly a warm year in Chile, a warm vintage. But the good thing is that we do, in, in the Costa, you don't feel it too much more than inland. In inland, you, you, in the inland, you can really see that the degree days are quite higher than the average and, and, the, and, and you, you start picking two to three weeks in, in advance. But in the coast, it's not too much the difference. Well, this one, <clears throat> As I told you, for example, one of the best uh, Chardonnay vintage of Pizarras, the best one was 17. So, so this is, anyway, was a good vintage for us in the Costa. And the, in the case of the Pinot Noir, then we mainly, um, we mainly, you know, pick very early in the morning. And then we have like a 15% whole cluster then we have fermentation process, normal three to five days, cold at eight Celsius. And then we use native yeast. That's really relevant. We use native yeast for the fermentation. And then we get some contact with the skins. And finally, the blend is aged for 11 months in French oak barrels with a little bit of new, just a 15%. We are now using a little bit of, uh, sometimes it go to this, you know, this X, this kind of a... Uh, yes, so concrete X. Concrete X, yeah. We are, you are using a little bit and we are using uh, Fudres as well. Fudres okay. is most, uh, yeah, Fudres is mostly going to the, to, to Pizarras and sometimes a little bit of uh, Aconcagua Costa. But anyway, when we talk about blend, is remember that I told you this wine comes from different plots within the same vineyard, uh, with different inclinations and 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 and, and the orientations. Uh, how do you say? Yeah. So, uh, what do you think about this uh, Pinot Noir? It's a. Uh, I think it has a nice color. I think it's really nice uh, in the in the nose beautiful cherry color with some hints of violets and a little bit i think i think a little again bit i think as, yeah if you it. had it uh in a tasting and you weren't told it was from chile uh i think you would um struggle to instantly jump to it being from chile 
Sure, and 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 I think the, um, this is some some of the of the advantages of uh, the winery Rasuri. I mean, we do every year the winemaking team that goes every year to make uh, work trips to different regions of the world. So we we do work and we do see and learn from different regions. They have been in, for example, in New Zealand, in France. Spain, Bordeaux, Burgundy, Francisco Betti, the winemaker, he's really, he really, he's in love with the uh, Burgundy, you know, Pinot and Chardonnay. So he tried to, to bring the style. Uh, he has learned a, a lot. So you kind of, kind of, you can, you can, you can feel a little bit. It's not too much. Um, how do you say? Uh, overripe fruit. You know, it's quite more again a little bit more elegant a little bit more complex yeah for sure i think um regan's just posted a note there which i think is really good is you know about the savory character of it and you know it, it is that lovely sort of savory earthy style um but i also i think just the texture of it's really cool and it's got that bright acidity on the finish as well just like the chardonnay did um yeah. Do you know the how old the Pinot Noir vines are out there? Yeah, that, that's interesting because they are not so old. They they were they were planted. They were planted in 2006, so it's just 15 years old. Mm. But the but I think I think the owner Eduardo gave in the perfect place because it's really 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 nice place for for these varieties and. And the soil, and and since we have the property is quite big, so he can play a little bit depending on the vintage with different plots, you know. So, so it's quite a complete. Um, hmm. I think it's quite interesting because you talk about fifteen-year-old vines, and you know, if you were talking to someone in Europe, they'd be sitting there, um, you know, thinking these are very, very young. But in the context yeah. of New Zealand you know, they're young, but they're not too young for New Zealand. And I think there's a there's a really interesting similarity between the Chilean wine industry and New Zealand. Um, I think so. You know, our, yeah. our evolution is not not too dissimilar, for sure. Sure. And, mm. uh, well, I've tasted beautiful Pinots from New Zealand. Beautiful Pinots. I, I, share, I share a lot of uh, uh, import, with different importers around the world with really nice uh, New Zealand wines. So, mm, so the Pinot Noir we just had, it's from those new vineyard sites out um, yeah. on the coast, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yes. Aconcagua Costa, we, we call the, it's, the, the, the place is called Tilwe in Quillota, and it's called, uh, we, we can call it, it's Aconcagua from the valley and Costa Coast. So it's a DO in Chile, you can use uh, that one to Mm. It's difficult to to build a small place like Quillota, you know. Still, we we still we have a long way to go, you know. In <laughs> France or some other in Burgundy, you can find one hectare, you know, and has a, has an uh, a do and you know, and people recognize the the place. So we try to put Aconcagua Costa to to build a little bit more Aconcagua, which we are kind of the own. There's just a few uh, wineries in Aconcagua. Just a few. Most of them are in Maipo, Colchagua, and Southern. So we're trying to build up Aconcagua because we we think it's a it's a great valley. So yeah. So this Pinot, in my opinion, well, it's um, I don't remember exactly the the degree. I think it's 13 or 13.5. It's quite nice uh, alcohol degree, and I think, as I told you, it's one of my favorites. It has a beautiful tanning structure, really, really soft. And, and still mm -hmm. I have tasted, uh, I think the first vintage of our Concagua Costa Pinot Noir specialty was around 2011, something like that. And I, and I've tasted them and I, and I think they're really good. So, so you can age this wine a little bit, you know, you can age easily for five to 10 years, not more than 10, I think, but, uh, but anyway, you can, you can age the wine and it, evolves quite nice as you Perfect. say at least got gets a nice acidity and that makes 
that makes the wine age quite yeah. good. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, also very, very good value for money, as you've said before, I think. For me, yeah. it's, it's, the one, it's the one that I buy all the time. I come back every, every time. I try to taste different Pinots. You know, Chile is quite close as a country. We do not, we do not import too much wine. I don't know how it's in New Zealand like, but we do not import too much wines from abroad. You can see a few Argentinians, some Spanish, and then just very, very hand-picked wines from Australia, New Zealand, France, Italy. But then I tried to taste many Pinots from Chile for, for, for that money, and I really come back always to Erasuris. It's not because I work there, but I really think it's, uh, for me, it's really good for, for the, for the, good for the value. Perfect. So, so now we go to, um, please. Sorry, the next flight, guys, if you've not poured your next flight, if you move on to um, the next three wines and Francesco, next up we have the Estate Carmenere 2019, followed okay. by the Max Reserva Carmenere. Great. Yeah, Great. so I think, oh. mm. Please tell me. Sorry? Yeah, okay. Um, so, well, as I told you before, really quickly, the Carmener, we just realized that we had Carmener in Chile in 1993. So it's been almost 30 years since we cut the variety in the country. So it's not too much time. The Carmener is a really difficult variety. It's the latest one to pick. Is the latest variety to pick after the Cabernet, after Syrah, the latest one, usually in April, May. And it's quite tough because it has a lot of uh, pyroxene uh, kind of taste sometimes. So, so we have thought as a country that uh, we need to override this variety in order to, to, to eliminate a little bit more this pyroxene or these green nodes. But what Francisco Bedic realize is that the older the vine gets, the better wine. And in our case, in the case of Erasuris, we are picking earlier, much earlier than the average wineries in terms of timings. Because we are not afraid about these green notes, we try to showcase because it's part of the typicity of the Carmenet. But at the same time, it's quite balanced with a nice alcohol. You don't have these cooked vegetables in the nose. You have, in our opinion, a little more, more, more nicely uh, typicity of the Carmenere with a little bit of spiciness and very typical spiciness and peppery. But it's, uh, for example, in Chile, uh, women love Carmenere because it's quite soft. The, 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 the tannins are quite velvety and, and easy drinking wine. So, well, in the case of the state, and I love Carmener as well anyway. I, I have been uh, understanding a little bit more the variety and I really like it. Um, so the, the Carmener from a state reserva range is coming uh, from the same plots, from the same vineyards as the Max, but of course different selection and different winemaking process. In this case, we, we of course, we crash with the deposit the, the, the grapes in the stainless steel tanks for fermentation and then 70% of the final blend goes for six months around to with use French oak to give a little bit of structure but the idea is to showcase the typicity of the variety with the state and then when you compare to Max, Max has a little bit more complexity uh, probably a, a slightly more sweet note because of the a little bit more oak. Anyway, in Erasmus, we use a lot the oak, but use oak because we want to try to put in the background the oak, not in the first place. So that's why we use a lot of use oak, always French. So in the case of Carmener, it's really uh, characteristic, the color, the really violet hints in the in the color then in the nose you really feel usually spiciness or some peppery uh, some black fruits as well and then in the in the palate in the case of the state it's quite quite nice quite an 
easy to drink with a little bit of a slightly grip of the of the of the tannins fruit fruit in the first place and very smooth uh, i don't know if you want to taste now the the, the max I was, just, I was just going to say with um, the estate wine, you know, I think, yes, it's great value. And I wanted to include it in today's tasting because it's really good value. But also, I think every time I taste that, if I'm wanting to choose a wine to show people what is Carmenere, like what typically does it taste like? That's the wine that we taste. So when we're doing stuff <laughs> education, um that wine gets used a lot because i think you know it's got the pyrazines it's got like the green capsicum character um you the tannins are that smooth soft that they should be and it's very plush you know it's everything that carmen air should be it's good for a, a 20 dollars new zealand wine um that's a lot of wine thank you thank you liz yeah i think i think uh, very similar to you i think carmen is, is quite uh, Sometimes you need to, to, to get a little bit, uh, um, sometimes people don't like at the first place the, the variety, but if you, if you get used to it, you, you really can find, uh, which is a really good companion <laughs> for either pairing or not. I mean, when I want to open a, you know, a wine and we do not have too much, let's say, food to, to pick for this specific wine, you can just drink it and it's really smooth and easy drinking and at the same time it goes pretty well with some spicy food i don't really know the new zealand food uh, list should be a lot of seafood obviously uh, very when, um when... i think if you had to sort of sum up the food here it'd be very multicultural we have so many influences <laughs> from you know so many parts of the world um and you can you can eat a lot of different things in New Zealand, and yeah, with with anything with a nice spice to it, um, that would be amazing. Yeah, it pairs pretty well with it, with some spiciness, which is not common for for every, of course, not with the Pinot, the spiciness, for for instance. And the the Carmenere goes pretty well, and and well. Um, so moving to the to the max. So uh, of course there are more selected plots. Of, um, another thing that is a little bit obvious, but it's a less yield. So with the max, we are talking about less yield because we look after more concentration. Um, in this case, we, we we source this from some old vines that we have. Of course, the, the first selection goes, and we know where it comes from the best to Kai, and then we we go we move to to, to max. You know, and uh, we have very nice selection, very nice concentration, vines which are already 25 to 30 years old. Because we did have some, but we didn't know. <laughs> but we planted uh, in 1995 or something. They Eduardo planted more Carmenet. So, uh, so yeah. It's a little bit more complex, a little bit more, uh, you have a little bit more complexity in the aromas. Um, it has 12 months of used oak with a 25% new oak. So you can feel a little bit more the oak, a little bit more complexity, but more in the, in the, in the background, you know. Um, in, the, in, the, in, in, in case of the, st of the, of the wine making, it's, quite similar, you know, um, in terms of uh, the wine making process, very similar. And yeah, you can find a little bit, a, a slightly sweet ending, which comes a little bit more from the, from the oak, but still, I love it. I, I really like this one. That's really elegant and fine grain tannin. And it can, it can, it has a nice acidity as well. It can age a little bit some years, if you like. Um, mm. Really nice acidity. Super, sorry, super interesting to see, you know, same grape variety, very similar in terms of um, what's happened with the exception of older vines 
and the use of oak. You know, if you sort of consider that, that that's basically the difference. Um, yeah. Yet, um, yeah. Is, um, I, I mean the, the most the most relevant list I think is uh, I mean is the most selected uh, yeah. plots with mm. less uh, I mean the concentration is very relevant uh, at the same time you know of course with the state you want to to showcase a little bit more the variety uh, the fruit so so with the max we have lower lower yields per hectare usually around eight to 10 tons per hectare. Uh, and with the state, we have a bit more, sometimes 12, but we don't play with more than that in terms of, uh, of yield. Oh. So I don't know if someone would like to, 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 to say anything about this. Um... What did you think guys of the Max Reserva, the, the second Carmen here? We've had lots of great comments on the estate in terms of its value for money. Um, and the balance at that price point, and that that's very, very hard to find. But um, yeah, I think it's good. I think the two wines are nice side by side, shows a good difference between them. Yeah, and, 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 and leave a little bit, so then you will taste Sky and you will, you, you can, then you can compare a little bit and, and you will find some difference as well. Perfect. Um, Liz. So the next one that you have is the Max Reserva Cabernet 2017. Yeah, so this one was uh, was a warm vintage, as uh, as I told you, that's seventeen. But we managed to 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 harvest two to three, sorry, two to three weeks probably in advance before the normal dates that we harvest. This is mostly um, soil from the Max 5, which is more alluvial. It's more, it's a very nice soil with nice drainage. It's, it's rip irrigated, as I told you, the, and, and, and the Cabernet Sauvignon vines really love this kind of uh, terroir. Um, in the case, uh, this Cabernet Sauvignon, you can find it's quite fresh. It's quite more in the in the elegant side, not too much oak. Again, 12 month French oak, 25% new. That's a little bit the 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 the, the, the parameter for uh, Francisco Vetic, the winemaker. And I think in the nose, this cap in the nose is quite particular, quite quite cap. You know, you can feel it's a cap with nice red fruits and some raspberries, some cassis, um, a little bit of chocolate, and then on the palate, mm. very juicy and full of flavors, nice red fruits, some chocolate, some pastry. And the tannins has a, a nice grip as well. I think it's fine grain tannins, already polished, but with a nice grip, you know, you can feel a little bit. So, so yeah, nice acidity as well. Uh, so you can see a little bit the, let's say the, the, the style of the winemaker with all these wines, he's usually trying to keep the freshness and the, the natural acidity of the grapes, even if it's Carmener, Cabernet, or whatever. And uh, honestly, and, 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 it, and we feel proud about our history in winemaking, but in Chile, we used, to, we used to leave the grapes a little bit more overripe in general. And Francisco Betty has been leading the the, the, the harvesting before, you know, two weeks before regular date in, in order to look this freshness and this elegant and this, let's say, in some word, the finesse of the wines, which we really like to pursue. And uh, in this case, you can find a Cabernet Sauvignon, which is already four years, but still, still is quite soft and, and it can go pretty well. I don't know if you have any comments. 
We've had some good comments on that. Um, there's one comment here that love this wine, just sent the taste buds into overdrive, wonderful flavors and balance. And um, yeah, Great. I think, you know, absolutely, Regan's just noted for a hot year, there's no ripeness there and I overripeness, sorry, there. Um, and I think, uh, you know, the picking time, obviously, absolutely critical um, and great to see that, you know, the team have obviously paid a lot of attention to that to get um, the freshness and acidity to where it is in that wine. Great. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it has been quite tough because people have asked, have asked a lot to a rapture, you know, you have been, we have been changing the style step by step, you know, from 2007 up to now, we started to put away the new oak, put more new, used oak, harvesting earlier, um, less, how do you say, um, maceration, mm. less time with the maceration in the maceration process, you know, less extraction, less alcohol. So we have been trying to move towards this style and, and we feel quite um, quite happy. I mean, <laughs> I, I say this that uh, Francisco Vedi, the winemaker, feels quite happy with the with the result, even though this was a quite tough vintage. Mm -hmm. Now we have in the we have uh, in the in the markets we then in, in the next coming order from <laughs> from Gengari probably you will get at 18, which is is beautiful as well. The, the 18 vintage was quite nice, so. Mm. We're, we're, the, we have we have quite, sorry, the quite Cabernet, a lot. What was sorry? the oak regime? The oak what? The what um, in the um, reserve Max Reserve Cabernet? How much oak and for how long? Twelve months and twenty five percent of used oak. Sorry, new oak. New oak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But one hundred percent of the blend is in in oak with oak contact. Thank you. Cool. Now, there's a lot of um, fantastic comments about that wine, and I think overall, with the wines we've looked at so far, um, lots of comments on how this is more finesse and elegance than you'd normally associate with Chilean wine. I think that uh, sums it up. You. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And, and and yeah, I think it's part of the of the work that we have been doing for the last 15 years. And I think Eduardo is really a visionary, you know. So when you say that you have a wine in La Place de Bordeaux with 100 points, quite successful, like Seña, Vino Chadwick, people at the, at the beginning didn't thought that Chile was able to produce quite uh, high quality wines. But now you see Rothschild, in Chile with Almaviva, when Mondavi and Eduardo Chávez with Seña, uh, you have the well, the Los Vascos, Rochel family, and a lot of Italians. Many people looking after uh, vineyards in Chile to to start doing their joint ventures because they they realize that we have a, a beautiful terroir for the reds and, and the whites as well. So we move to the icons now, Liz. Yes, we will do. And just um, for everyone pouring their glasses in the order we're going to taste, what I suggest you do is you pour them one, two, three as they're labelled on the bottles so that you know exactly what's in each glass. But we are going to taste them in a slightly different order to what we've got there. So pour them as per normal. And then what we're going to do is taste um, the Syrah first, and then we will taste Kai and then we will taste Don Maximiano. But pour them as one, two, and three, and then taste them as one, three, and two. Is that clear enough? <laughs> as long as you know what you're tasting at any point in time, we should be okay. Go. So the first one you've got is uh, the 2015 vintage of uh, La, Com La Combre. Yes. Uh, no, we will... I sorry, I didn't. Sorry, I, I was. What do you say? Sorry, Liz. So Sarah You're... first, then Kai, then Don Maximiano. Yes. No, no. I will. I will suggest to go first with Kai. Okay. 
I will suggest, I don't know if you have it clear which one is Kai. Yes, we do. Now, yeah. that, now that you already taste State and Max, you already know the Thai, the, the carminate typicity, so you will find it there. Okay, perfect. So everyone, <laughs> glass number three, uh, Kai is the next wine we're going to talk about. Yeah. Perfect. So this so so this guy has a, is ninety three percent of Carmener and a seven seven percent Petit Syrah. This was, as I told you, this was cooler than average vintage, which, in a typical winery of Chile that we used to over that they used to overripe the Carmener, there was a quite big rain in in April. So most of the wineries didn't have the grapes picked or harvest. In comparison, Erasuris at that time had 90% of the grapes harvest because we harvest earlier than, not the rest of the wineries, but earlier than some of the other wineries in Chile. So for us, this was an excellent year for the icons, especially. So in this guy, as I told you, it's a 93% Carmenet, a 7% Petit Syrah. This is a little bit part of a Francisco Vetic. He had a little bit of, of Syrah to add some, a little bit of structure, but but the mostly is a, is a, mostly is a Carmenet, right? And uh, as I told you, the, the big difference from this one and the other ones is the parcels that we pick. We We know which Parcels plots exactly give really good uh, Carmenet at this time. Very old vines for, for what Chile is used to have in vines of Carmenet. It's more than 20 years old vines. And um, and I would say that, uh, that Francisco Betic have learned how to work with the Carmenet because as I told you, many wineries and we included used to overripe the Carmenet because we were afraid of these green notes. But in the case of uh, Francisco Vettig, he was very brave to start picking early and he said, you know, this is the deficit of the Carmenet. Even though I leave it four more weeks in the vine, I will still find some green notes, more cooked, of course, more overripe, but I will still find it. So we need to be proud of the TPCD and trying to show it in a more elegant way. So this is what we do with the with the kai. We use 22 months of oak, 70% is new, and the remaining 30 is used French oak. I don't know what you think about this one. Um, I really like <laughs> you've it. Lots of, you've got lots of comments here, but um, they're very small words because I think everyone is a little bit speechless. Uh, the first one was simply wow. Uh, then we've got Kai is beautiful. Uh, this is delicious, followed by beautiful. And then a few more words. Uh, I get a real smoky taste uh, in a lot of the wines today. Oh, okay, sorry, not a comment, but sorry, I was reading down them. So there's a smoky okay. note to these. What is that the toasting from the barrel or what? Uh, there's a smoky component in this, but it's been in some of the other wines as well. Where do you think that comes from? Yeah, no, it's it's we don't we don't use very toasted oaks. We we try to use very. I don't remember exactly the name of the of the of the of the supplier of the barrel. Sorry, we do work with Austrian and French uh, Austrian fooders, but the smokiness I would say is part of the typicity. Um, of the Carmenet. I, I think you, you, you find it uh, in, in this one, not in the rest or probably in, in another Carmenet, but this is a little bit more in the typicity of the Carmenet, this smokiness. And um, I would say it's quite more, it's quite more complex, you know, the, the, the aromas and some truffles, you know, some graphite, Mm. Um, some spices, you know. Uh, well, I think this one I, I really like. It's beautiful. It's a cool vintage, cold vintage, but uh, 
I think it's nice. So we've just had a question here. Um, if you can resist simply drinking this wine, how long would you put it in the cellar for? I will rather put it in the cellar for 10 years and then you can you can age a little bit more. But you are tasting now a 2016, so it's just five years today, let's say, and it still is nice, you know. You you can still drink it, and but 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 I think the optimal, and especially in this case, which was a cool vintage with a with a with a with a nice acidity, I I, I would say you you can you can age it for for a couple more years, three to five. First vintage of Kai was 2006. So we, 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 we did a beautiful exercise with all my colleagues and we taste all the vintage of all these icons, Kai, La Cumbre and Don Maximiano. And it was beautiful to go through the history. It's part of, let's say, Chilean wine making history because we, we don't have too much old. Uh, Don Maximiano is the oldest icon wine from Chile, you know, I mean, not even Almaviva or Don Melchor or Seña. Don Maximiano has 83 vintage, it's the first, the top one, the first. So we have the history of, let's say, Chilean winemaking, the, the latest winemaking. So in this case, uh, to, to finish the, the question, um, I have tasted, tasted from 2005 that was more overripe style or whatever but still the wine was alive with the the the, 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 the carmener has beautiful acidity when you respect it in the in, in the time of harvesting so the more closer vintages like this one the more potential of aging so i i already taste some wines from 2005 6 7 10 and they are very nice but i think this one will be able to age even a little bit more. So to answer your question, it's difficult to say. Um, I would say buy six bottles and then <laughs> and then open one bottle one year and then you wait for two years and and the, we are well anyway. This <laughs> I need to discuss this with Liz, but we are we are opening for the 150 years anniversary. We are opening the cellar. The family seller, so we're selling some back vintages of uh, the Maximiano, Kai, and La Cumbre. Uh, you can even have a 1983 Don Maximiano available for sale. We have some bottles, and we're trying to allocate a little bit these wines. But I, we, we really like the, the the countries that they 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 are wine wine countries like New Zealand. So we will be very pleased to we are very pleased to have our wines there and and to. And for you to taste them, yeah. So hopefully you like this wine. I I really like it. Uh, this Carmener is is a is beautiful wine. Uh, not so affordable like the Max, but uh, <laughs> but for special occasions, it's good. Yeah, no, it's very very good. We've just had a comment um, there actually on that, and Stephen, I think you know really valid point is you know. The Kai is very, very good, but when you consider it back to that Max Reserver and also just the value for money of the Max Reserver, you know, it's, yeah, the, the Kai is very special, but um, it just shows you, I think the Max Reserver and also the estate range from Areza is, I mean, these wines just, you know, there's so much there and the price yeah. points are, are not high. I, I agree. I agree. I mean, the, the, the quality that shows a state and max is still very good, still mm. very nice and and yeah. yeah. So, so now we shall we move to La Cumbre? Let's do that. Perfect. So glass number one. Five. Yeah. So um, well, remember that all the reds except from Pinot and some Syrah is coming from the inland. So in this case, we have planted in the hillside the Syrah, like in the, like in the Cote de Ron. Like we 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 kind of uh, uh, 
learn a little bit from there because Sira was just brought in 1993 by Eduardo Chávez to Chile. So Sira was has been same as let's say the Carmener has been for many years, but we didn't know. In the case of Sira, we brought the first cuttings in 1993, so it's a really, really quite new uh, variety in Chile. In this case, it's 100% uh, Sira. It's a 14%. This was a normal, regular, average vintage in terms of uh, degree days and weather and flowering and and everything. So. So I think um, in this case, um, I'm not sure if this one, let me remember. In a couple of vintages of Syrah, La Cumbre, we blended with a little bit of Syrah from the coast to give a little bit more freshness. But in this case, I, I cannot assure you if it was or not. Let me check if I see. Yeah, this one has a slightly percentage of Sira from Aconcagua Costa, which is totally different profile huh? uh, of the of the taste. It's more in the it's more a little bit in the spiciness, the one that comes from Costa, a little bit more fresh. This one is a little bit more more rounded, uh, like the like the one. So so in this case. Same as Kai and same as Don Maximiano, Francisco Vedic used 22 months of oak, French oak barrels. In this case, a 50% was new. Um, of course, very selected uh, plots and very low yields. Very, very nice aromas, blackberries, and some blue berry pie with some clover notes and more in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the dark black fruit and and uh, quite balanced with this bit of uh, freshness from the coast. Um, in the palate, I think it's. Uh, I think has a, a very nice cherry, raspberries, a little bit of say caramel and this uh, olives, uh, slightly olives and and it's nice. It's very long, very persistent, very very nice tannins and, and I think sira is uh, well. You know sira as well. But, um, you don't have too much planted in New Zealand, I think, but well, the Australian, you, your neighbors have. But it's quite it's, it's quite a difficult variety, in, in my opinion, that I need to sell the Syrah all over the world. It's not easy. Um, it's not an easy variety to sell. People usually don't like it too much, but I think uh, this is nice. I don't know what you think. I think like it's it. really interesting because it's uh, it's more similar in style, I think, to a New Zealand Syrah than, a, than an Australian Shiraz, for sure. And, you know, it's got that lovely sort of white pepper character mm. that you tend to get in Syrah when it's in a, a cooler spot, which, you know, you wouldn't necessarily expect in a Chilean um, Syrah. So I think, you know, that nice white pepper and then the acidity, it, it gives it that lovely freshness um, which, you know, Regan's made a comment here that um, he needs some grilled lamb ribs right now. Mm. <laughs> and it does leave you wanting food. I agree. Yeah. But this is, uh, I mean, this is a very nice example from uh, Sira from Chile. Um, it's not particularly for a single, single place. It's more, as I told you, more about the ballet. Now we are Focusing only in, in La Cumbre is now only from uh, from the inland vineyard property. This one is mostly the inland property, but we place a little bit of the of the coast as you as you realize with your with 
this uh, white pepper. So, mm. so yeah, I think it's 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 a it's a nice. Uh, I have been tasting a lot the the, the the cool climate Syrah. Like we have one in the Aconcagua Costa range, Syrah, and, and and I have been enjoying a lot as well. You know, it's quite dif different and, and mm. quite enjoyable at the same time. Yeah, it's interesting. It, there's a lot of similar similarity with New Zealand Syrah for sure. And you know, Syrah in New Zealand, it's actually only two percent of planting, so it's very very tiny. Um, but it's interesting because it makes a, as a percentage more premium wine um, than most varieties and um, it, it's doing quite well on export, although it's a, a very, very tiny percentage. So it's interesting. At least, sorry for my ignorance, but the Shiraz, the, I mean Shiraz uh, from New Zealand is mostly up in the north. Yeah, it's predominantly in Hawke's Bay, which is sort of down um yeah. yeah you know where i mean <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah I pre predominantly there it is actually planted um the other so the majority of it i think it's actually about 85 percent is there and then the next largest planting is actually on waiheke island so an island um not far from us in auckland and then there's actually quite good plantings um up north but really if we're talking um quality Syrah, um, we're talking Hawke's Bay and then out in Waiheke. Um, yeah. There's some in central Otago, but um, whilst it's very good, um, if I was talking globally about Syrah, I wouldn't be talking about central Otago Syrah, that would just confuse people. <laughs> yeah, okay. So yeah, let's move to the final wine. Um, I wanted to leave uh, Don Maximiano because it's our it's our Edit touch our top wine from Erasuris. Um, it has a beautiful history, uh, a nice, a very nice style. This vintage, remember, 16 was cooler than the average, and Francisco Bedic, the winemaker, really loved that because he was more in the in the freshness, in the in the in the finesse, in the elegance. So he was just amazed with this vintage. Uh, for him, he, this is one of the best ones for me as well. Um, just to give you a, a, a brief history of Don Maximiano. Don Maximiano used to be 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. And we used to age it in, ah, how's the name of it? Raulí Oak. Raulí is a Chilean um, tree, Chilean wood. Because at that time in the 80s, we didn't have access to buy some French oak and we didn't do that. We, I mean, winemaking was just starting to look, uh, uh, let's say, um, abroad, you know. We, at the beginning, we were only focusing in, in the local market, uh, which was more, more simple. And then we start learning and we start bringing technology. We start bringing the stainless steel tanks, the, you know, the French barrels. But at that time was a little bit more artisan with wood from Chile. So 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. And then starting from 2000 and I think 2004 or five, when Francisco Vettig arrived, he started adding different varieties. So today, in this case, we will take 2016, but it, today it's a Bordeaux blend with, of course, with the structure of Cabernet Sauvignon. We never go less than 65 to 70% of Cabernet Sauvignon. And then depending on the vintage, we play with the Malbec and Petit Verdot, Carmenere and Cap Franc. So the warmer vintage, probably uh, Francisco adds a little bit more Carmenere. The cooler vintage, then we add more Malbec. In this case, this wine has a 69% Cabernet Sauvignon, 12% Malbec, 8% Petit Verdot, 8% Car Carmenere, and 3% Cap Franc. It's a 13.5 alcohol, and it's, again, same as Caille and Lacumbe, it's 22 months in French oak barrels. 65% of those barrels new. So 
those are the, a little bit the change of the style. So picking earlier, less new oak, before it was 100% new oak, now it's less new oak, step by step, you know, from 2008 to nowadays, we have been picking earlier and leaving less new oak in the final blend. Um, most of this uh, sourcing of the grapes of the Garnet Sauvignon comes from Max 5, which is, remember, the the vineyard which is very close to the to the Aconcagua River. And that's a perfect spot for the Cabernet Sauvignon for us. So, yeah, as I told you, let me... Beautiful, beautiful nose, I think. Um, beautiful fruit. Uh, in my opinion, I, 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 can, I can feel fruit, you know, and a little bit, when time passes a little bit, you can feel a little bit more other, other aromas. It's, it's quite complex. It's, you can find some coffee beans, some cocoa, a little bit of cassis, very particular of the carne sauvignon, and some uh, fresh cranberries, red, red fruits. Um, even though even though it's young, same as the other ones, you can feel the elegance, you feel a nice uh, tension, a nice grip, um, still very delicate tannins, very soft, very smooth, and with a very beautiful ending acidity, that's what I feel, and I think this one has a, a, a lot of aging potential as well. It's a wine with a lot of potential for aging. Perfect. It's, um, yeah, I mean, it's a wine that really does show the history um, of Chilean wine in a glass, which is fantastic. Thank you. And the evolution. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, well, um, I don't know if you have any questions, any further questions you would like to, to ask or... Um, fantastic um, lineup of wines, um, Francesco. Thank you very, very much for taking us through them. And um, just before we do finish, perhaps, are there any questions on the wines or any comments on the wines from everyone? If I um you're welcome to unmute yourself i have it just so that you can unmute yourself if you'd like to but any thoughts for francesco on those wines mm -hmm. yeah we've got one here that it's a very impressive lineup you enjoyed that Stephen? yeah <laughs> yeah thank cool. you but mostly thank you all for 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 taking your time in tasting our wines and and uh, and listening a little bit about the history so we are quite, quite neighbors, huh? uh, not so close, but uh, with a with a with a similar history in terms of the wine. Uh, I think so. So it's nice. I, I will please invite me, Liz, to, to to taste some New Zealands as well. If you have any any New Zealand tasting, even though I don't taste, to listen, that would be. Yeah, very we nice could we could swap I, them the other way around. I can see you some I, I, Yeah, I admire. <laughs> I admire pretty much uh, uh, New Zealand, this beautiful country, <laughs> uh, what I've seen in pictures. I think we have a lot of things in common. Huh? If you come to Chile to the south, you will see many different lake districts and volcanoes. and You can ski, snow, you have the Patagonia with glaciers. So it's beautiful to come. I invite you to come. And if you ever come, let Liz know and we can arrange something to go to the vineyard and taste the back vintages with us and, and have a very nice experience with us. Perfect. So I leave you I, I, I invite you if you want if you come to Chile when when things get better uh, to come and visit us. I'm, I hope to visit you soon. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much, Francesco. I know it's 
nearing on 11 p.m. there on Friday night. We're so, starting, we're starting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it's just time for dinner, isn't it? Um, but oh, no, I very much appreciate you taking the time at the end of um, the week. And also to everyone who booked for tasting um, today and joined us on a Saturday afternoon, um, thank you very much. I think exactly the right thing um, to do at the end of lockdown. Um, just a reminder, I know a lot of you know this already, but we are continuing our Zoom tastings during the year. So we're not just doing them during lockdown. We'll probably ramp them up during lockdown. So please don't <laughs> back here. Um, but we've got one coming up um, with uh, Shadow Pichon Baron, um, so a Bordeaux tasting. Also has uh, Shadow Sidero at the beginning and um, because of the ownership of all those properties, it has a uh, Quinta de Nobel at the end of it. And that'll be presented by Chris Chan Seeley. And then we do have a Shadow Palmer tasting coming up after that. So if you haven't booked, um, all of those details are up online. Um, the last one is we won't be doing in-person tastings at level two. We're very hopeful to be in level one week after next and would love to see you at a tomato tasting, which the details for that are up online as well. Um, finally, um, oh, sorry, actually Regan has just pointed out that we are going to delay next week's Joss Meyer tasting, so until level one. So it's really easy to remember with us, we won't do tastings unless we're down at level one. Um, we just um, don't believe it's responsible to do otherwise. Um, last thing is I will download a copy of um, this recording and um, we'll pop it up online and flick you out an email with a bit of an offer as well around the wine. So you'll get that either this afternoon or tomorrow morning um, so that you can um, jump online if you'd like to purchase any of these. And of course, with our store doors open, you're more than welcome to go and see the team. I'm sure they'd love to see you. So thank you all very much. And thank you, Francesco. Thank you guys, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Liz, for inviting uh, Regan and, and all of you attending. And I hope to see you soon in person. <laughs> yeah, yes, indeed. Very good, Bye. thanks guys. Thank you so much, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.